Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, in order to add and subtract fractions, we have to know how to find a common denominator. We have to be able to find equivalent fractions using that common denominator. The notes you have in your journal, the first thing it tells us to do is take our denominators, which are 4 and 8, and we're going to list the multiples until we find the first multiple they have in common. The first multiple they have in common. So if we go 8, 16, 24, 32, 4, 8, 12. Oh look, they have 8 in common. 8 is our least common denominator. 8 is our least common denominator. Which means I need to change 3 fourths equals something over 8, and 3 eighths equals something over 8. Well, 3 eighths is already over 8, so 3 eighths is going to stay 3 eighths. Then, I have to ask myself, self, what did I multiply by 4 to get me my common denominator of 8? If I look here, I can see I multiplied by 2. If you multiply your denominator by 2, you must do the same thing to your numerator. And 3 times 2 is 6. So 3 fourths equals 6 eighths, and 3 eighths equals 3 eighths. Now I could add, I could subtract, I could do whatever I needed to do with this problem. I couldn't do that because I didn't have a common denominator. So make sure you have this written. So our next problem is 11 twelfths and 1 6. We need to find the common denominator. So I take my two denominators and I'm going to list the multiples or I'm going to look at the multiplication chart. And if I take 12, 24, 36, 6, 12, boom. 12 is my common denominator. Once I know what my common denominator is, I change them so they're both over that common denominator. And since 11 twelfths is already over 12, I mean, I would just multiply it by 1, and it would stay 11 twelfths. Then I have 1 sixth. I need to change to twelfths. And I ask myself, self, what do I multiply by 6 to get 12? And myself says, you multiply by 2. And if I multiply my denominator by 2, I must also multiply my numerator by 2. And 1 times 2 is 2. two. So 11 twelfths equals 11 twelfths. 1 six equals 2 twelfths. And if I wanted to... Just to verify that I had it right, I could take my 1 6 and I would see that it indeed equaled 2 twelfths. This is fairly easy, but it's something you have to be able to do in order to add or subtract fractions. The next problem that you were given. Good. As we're finding equivalent fractions using the common denominator. So we have the fraction one half and the fraction two fifths. In order to find our common denominator, <coughs> okay, that's enough. Uh, you have to go back in a minute. We list our multiples, or we could look at our multiplication chart. And we list the multiples till we find the first one that they have in common. The first one they have in common is 10. So my least common denominator is 10. Now I have to take both of these fractions and change them so they're over the denominator of 10. 
both of these fractions and change them so they're over the denominator of 10. And I ask myself, Blake, 2 times what is 10? 3 times 5. 5. If I multiply my denominator by 5, I have to also multiply my numerator by 5. So, Blake, 1 times 5 is? 5. five. So, 1 half equals 5 tenths. You could use the fraction pieces you made, and you can see that that is indeed true. And then I ask myself, Audrina, 5 times what is 10? If I multiply my denominator by 2, I must also multiply my numerator by 2. So, Audrina, 2 times 2 is? 4. four. So, 1 half equals 5 tenths, and 2 fifths equals 4 tenths. Now, if I were to have to add or subtract, I could do that, because they have a common denominator. And I've changed the way the fractions were written, but I haven't changed the value of the fractions. Our next set of fractions is 5 sevenths and 3 fifths. We need to find a common denominator. So I can write down my denominators of 5 and 7 and list the multiples. Or I could go ahead and look at my multiplication chart. And look at my multiplication chart, find the first one that shows up in both rows is what, Abigail? Say 35. 35. Good, or least common denominator would be 35. So I'd have to list the five out seven times. That's a lot, that's why I always prefer to look at my uh, multiplication chart. Work, work smartly. Work smartly. I'm not even sure that's a word, but do it anyway. Now we know our common denominator is 35. So we're going to change 5 sevenths into something over 35. We're going to change 3 fifths into something over 35. And I have to ask myself, Bassett. What do I multiply by 7 to get 35? 5. 5. If I multiply my denominator by 5, I must also multiply my numerator by 5. And Bassett, what is 5 times 5? 25. 25. So 5 sevenths is equal to 25 thirty-fifths. Then I have to ask myself, Lichen, what do you multiply by 5 to get 35? <coughs> 5 times what is 35? 7. seven. If I multiply my denominator by 7, I must also multiply my numerator by 7. And Lincoln, 3 times 7 is? 21. 21. So 3 fifths equals 21 20 to 30 fifths. And 5 sevenths equals 25 30 fifths. So that's finding equivalent fractions with the common denominator. Trust me, we'll get plenty more practice with this. Boom, shakalaka, peace out, God bless, love you, subscribe, do something kind today, save the bees, please.